why I'm already rebuilding the print NC. Well, it's not a total rebuild. I'm not going to clickbait you guys. However, I do want to talk about some of the changes I've made recently and maybe why I made some of these changes. So we will get right into it, guys. The biggest change that you'll notice here is that these are the version 3 plates. So I actually purchased these plates from Greg on Discord. And some of you guys might be asking, Brian, why'd you buy a CNC made part? Don't you have a CNC? And um, you would be exactly correct. However, my time is pretty limited lately. And Greg had a set of plates that were already made up. They were machine drilled, tapped, ready to go. And I thought, you know, that's worth the, worth the cost for me to uh, get these machined uh, and sent out ready to go. So um, Greg did a great job here. You know, you can see the surface quality is, is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. So, but yes, the biggest difference between the version three and the version two plates, I'll try to get in here, is the uh, tramming. So you can see the, the M6 right here. This is your only tramming bolt on the bottom. And previously on the version 2.1 plates, you have these two set screws for tramming. And um, it works, but it's just, it's another bolt to worry about. And so that is one nice thing about the version 3 upgrade. And uh, this is the, the default upgrade or the default uh, uh, layout. So that is, uh, if you are building this, that is going to be included already in the design. Uh, forgive the, the plug here, but I do have these on my Amazon wish list. Uh, it is an affiliate link, uh, link in the description. Huge, uh, huge helper to get the uh, machine together. Put it on your impact or your screwdriver. Uh, pretty nice to have. So another significant change is this uh, T-block. I don't know what you'd call this. Bearing, bearing block for the Z-axis. This is a printed part uh, initially, and I think it is meant to uh, be replaced with an aluminum part. So you can kind of see I took out the left and right ch uh, chunks there, and this used to be full height. Um, I, you have to trim it out to clear the bearings like that kind of. And then you will also drill and tap this bottom hole here. So uh, I, threw, I already threw away my printed part, but I was starting to get a crack forming on the left-hand side here. And, um, you know, it, it worked fine, but that is, this is something I would recommend upgrading to if you have the capability of doing so. All right, moving on up, we have, um, this is a motor mount that I have revised. You can see I have my new uh, limit switch on here. The limit switch that I had before was mounted on the side and it kind of ran horizontally. And I, it, it was okay, like it did the job, but I was, it was mounted in a way that I had to only use the last couple threads and it was like sticking way out. So I have this mount revised. That way when the plate comes up, it will bump up against the limit switch there. So I went ahead and took the file. Again, I'm so thankful that we have actual Fusion files to work with here. So I went ahead and modified the Fusion file and got the uh, went ahead and modeled this uh, limit switch mount here. So it, it not a huge change, but I do think this will be a little more robust when it comes to uh, raising the z-axis up for homing. All right, you guys might know me a little bit by now. Um, I, I like to get a little fancy, so I went ahead and modeled some plugs for the cable chain. These were an ugly yellow, and I actually made a reel on my Instagram. Quick Instagram plug if you want to follow me there. I got these dimensions correct on the first try off the printer, which never happens for me. So they make a pretty nice, satisfying snap when you push them in. So sorry I don't have any footage, but I did make a reel of it on my Instagram if you want to check it out. Also, you'll notice I have metal motor mounts now, and I am not sure how I feel about these. Uh, they they work fine. They uh, I'm still kind of testing them here. I didn't get all matchy matchy with the base, but the reason I went with a metal motor mount here is that during the long cycle time of the keyboard video, the keyboard cut is my longest cut by far, 40, 40, 50 minutes, and the motor mounts were getting soft during that cut, and I. Uh, I am overdriving these maybe in half amp or full amp. So mix that in with a long cycle time and they got a little warm, a little soft. So there is uh, some images floating around of a revised motor mount. It's the, uh, the pro version, I guess you'd call it. And um, it'd be nice to machine that at some point. However, I just wanted to get these in metal and uh, get them made. So I do still get some wobble with these. However, it's not as bad. Uh, I've had some comments on the wobble 
on a couple of my other videos, and it is totally a valid concern. Does it affect the performance of the machine? Maybe, but um, I believe with the pro mounts, we're not getting any wobble. So something I'll uh, you know keep in mind for down the road. But the metal ones will hold me over just fine for now. So Brian, why are you why are you uh, overdriving your motors by half amp or an amp? Well, that brings us to the roller plates and the roller plates here. Uh, I have new carriages, so I went ahead and remade carriages for both Y axes as well as Z axis. And I talked about this in my previous video a little bit. So I was getting some binding at higher speeds and I forget what speed that was, but it, it wasn't fast enough. <laughs> I was seeing, you know, guys in discord go a lot faster and even on, even on YouTube go a lot faster. And I, I couldn't get those speeds without binding. And so I came to find out that I can't, I couldn't tighten down these uh, bearing blocks uh, completely without being able to move this at all. So I went ahead and I got the steel from a new vendor and they have a nice straight cut saw. You can see how, uh, how flush everything is there. And I'll even show you the Z axis here. I used to have quite the gap. Uh, right here. You can kind of see in one of my, my enclosure video. I think I show that off But basically I got all new roller plates and that allows me to Not bind anymore. So I, I've done a little bit of testing and I haven't had any issues so far So we'll do some speed tests at some point, but you know so far so good So so we'll come around to the right here. I'm not sure how long this video is getting I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter lately, you know, so they're not like 20 minutes long, but the uh I went ahead and added the cable chain to the right hand side to the Y axis and this these mounts are similar to the X axis mounts here. However, they just kind of drop down a little bit lower to kind of get the cable chain to swoop around a little bit lower and I'll cut this off someday. The, uh, the only thing you got to keep in mind if you do have the inductive limit switches here, you can see the limit switch here. If you're running the cable chain, you got to make sure that the cable chain will clear the limit switch. I'll try to get on the other side of this real quick here. Bear with me on the camera movements. Um, that's going to be tough. You'll just have to trust me, I guess. But if you get in here, you, the cable chain has to clear the limit switch when you're, uh, you know, moving back and forth. We'll step over to the bench real quick. Uh, small change I made to the motor mount here. I, I painted this blue and it was blue for like 10 minutes and I was like, nope, this doesn't need to be blue. So I just painted it gray <laughs> with like the rest of the frame. You can see the blue here. I went ahead and ovaled out my holes just a little bit. I've already tried to tram this and I had to rotate it a little bit more to the right. So I made one of my holes a little bigger, added a washer here. Focus, please. And you can see I just added a washer to the, to the bolt here. Throw that in and we're good to go. So uh, small change, probably not even worth mentioning, but that is something that I've done. So I think that's going to do it for the video, guys. Uh, this will probably be the last print NC video for a while. I feel like I have kind of beat the topic to death a little bit here on YouTube. And, you know, we're kind of move on to other project videos down the road. Uh, I have a couple other videos in mind that are, you know, not print NC related. So um we're gonna dive into some small form factor pc stuff some more keyboard stuff of course the print nc will make an appearance in you know a handful of those videos but we're gonna kind of step away from the dedicated print nc videos for a while on that note i want to give a huge shout out to everyone for watching you know we're almost at 3,000 subscribers which is insane to me so i did not think i'd be doing videos on this and you know having this many people watch so a uh, huge shout out to the community for watching the videos and commenting and everything. I just think that's awesome to see. On that note, thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.